That's Hello, shark tits. Uncle Ben. I've come to talk to you again. My name's Host Eric, and I'm Host Talking Things. I'm here with my ISTJ friend Cameron, and right now we are having a flight, a seven weed flight of weeds. What's up, y'all? Flight of weeds. So the first weed we're trying today here in this flight is Oaksterdam OG. Now, Cameron's pre live stream comment about it was a little bit of mold, he said. <laughs> a little bit of mold taste. Let me see if I can taste the mold. A couple parts per million mold. Not a uh, deal breaker. More like uh, I would mix it with some other weed next time. You got new audio. Um, what's that red thing over there? That that's a, a sound card, an external sound card. That so these mics card. go into. Okay, so that's a higher quality sound card than your computer <coughs> may have, or more. Uh, well, it lets it lets me run mics that otherwise wouldn't connect to the computer. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> well, yeah, I didn't love the taste of it either. I'm not thrilled with that taste. I think the look was all right. It looked like quality with trichomes, possibly, maybe. Well, look. Here's the thing. It is true that you get a better sense of how the weed tastes when you grind it up like this. We're doing it ISTJ style. Uh, this is the Mars OG. I'm going to grind up each little nug of, of each weed and, and we'll split that grind. Hammond likes to smoke like this. He doesn't like to smoke little chunks of nug. He likes to grind it up. That's a special way. And he's correct, of course, that it does ignite a lot better than if it's all in one big piece. And uh, probably just a generally a smarter way to do like it. A, a, okay, I'm going to call it a spitting jar, a spittoon, but I'm going to call it a weed tune because I'm going to have to tap. If we're going, if I'm going at Eric speed, I'm going to have to tap decent reusable weed into a thing, maybe even a piece of paper. Whatever. That's the thing. This right. is what's known as a weed tune, <laughs> newly named by Cameron. A weed tune it is, of course, to knock out your partially charred chunks of weeds when you're having a, a flight because you want to try the next one. Uh, you don't have Burger King, you know, palate cleanser, but, you know. Here you go. <laughs> you're supposed to have a Whopper Junior as a palate cleanser. <laughs> or what would, what's, your, what's your fast food, Eric? What do you do? I'm mean, a McDonald's guy. I'm a straight-up, old-fashioned, play-it-by-the-numbers McDonald's guy. I'll get your quarter pounder with cheese. I'll get you, you two McDoubles. I'll go with the double on the McDouble. It's a uh, McQuadril, it's called. Do you do the value meal, or do you just order? Here you oh, go. no. I, you I order. All la carte. All day long. All la carte. Carts and, carts and arts are Let me ask in my you heart. This. Have you gone to the trouble of enhancing your Muck life with the Muck app? No. Because I can, I can tell you something, Eric. Yeah. Last time I went to McDonald's, I got uh, large fries for a dollar. Um, I've had, yeah, large fries for a dollar. You bought fries? Yeah, dude, look at that. Seriously. That's like 66% uh, off. The Mook app has all this free stuff for you because they want Mook, Mook um, what is it called when you go back again and again? Mook <laughs> um, membership? Make regular person? Make normal human being? Mook. Normal human beings go to McDonald's constantly. Okay, look, female EHP, 40 piece McNugget New Year feast. I'm totally going to approve of that. I think I could eat 40 McNuggets. How many McNuggets do you think you could eat? Oh, we should do a challenge. Um, first, you know a, what? first complete gift one. We got the Mars OG in, in the, in the yeah. uh, what's it called, in the batter's box. I could not eat 60 McNuggets, but I could eat over 20 McNuggets. I, name that name that number of McNuggets you could eat. I could eat twenty. I could eat twenty-one McNuggets, Mister Strauss. I could name this tune and thirteen McNuggets. <laughs> you could only eat thirteen. I said I could name the tune in the time it would take me to eat thirteen McNuggets. All right. What's uh, this tune? This, do, do, do. The Jeopardy song. All right, three three notes. Mars OG. Sharp purple. Strong. Nice. 
No aftertaste. Yeah, it's got a. <clears throat> it's got kind of like a, a stiff pepper to it. It it's a clean, stiff peppery. It may, it may have a slight hint of rotten orange peel aftertaste, but not in a bad way. Like a like a twenty <coughs> foot away, gently rotting orange. <coughs> Huh. Like not bad. Just like hey, I'm outside. I'm in the orange grove. It's cool. Shit rots inside of me constantly. I just I almost never ever do. I blew out a bong rip through my nose instead of my mouth. Oh yuck. It caused me to feel a peppery explosion of sinus sinus awareness. What do you think about self stimulatory behaviors? <laughs> I engage in them all the time. Well, we all masturbate, but, you know, the people who vape and they blow their smoke through their nose and they do the rings and all that, would you would you liken that to the autism spectrum self-stimulatory behavior in a, some sort of way, like staring at the toilet water, staring at water flow, stuff like that? Look, it's, it's sort of self-stimulatory, but it's not the same sort of thing. I do self-stimulatory behavior that is the same sort of thing. I chew my tongue. Like, I um last night when I was really tired but also not really falling asleep, I was like crazy weird with the stimmy stuff. Just like like an autistic person for sure. Now, that's actual autistic people do that shit. Have you used a fidget spinner lately? That was pretty autistic. So uh, always fidget spinning is pretty Asperger's autistic. Yeah, it depends. It depends. Like. The only way it would actually be an Asperger's kind of self-stimulatory behavior is if they're tripping out on the appearance of it. Um, if they're tripping out, if they enjoy doing the thing, oh. that's actually not self-stimulatory. So you're saying there's a visual component in many some self -stim Yeah, a lot of self-stimulatory behaviors are visual. Like, I used to yeah. do this thing that I don't do anymore. I've been in a long time where I'd, like, move things like switch eyeballs and oh, move yeah. the thing in its face like that and kind of like do that sort of shit. Oh, yeah. That's the sort of stuff they get stuck on. You'll see kids doing this on the playground. Here folks at home. You'll see kids doing stuff like this. They're just kind of like they're looking at something behind their hand as though like I'm crushing your head or something. Or right. Something. Or I had a kid who was obsessed with the toilet and flushing the toilet. Here's weed on the floor, Eric. Look, that's bonus later weed. Bonus later weed. Uh, floor weed. Yeah, floor weed's the best. Floor weed always uh, smokes better. But the thing is, like, I can I can diagnose a kid from two football fields away. Like, I, if there are a thousand people, I can see one person, and I can see the behaviors they're doing in relation to the way that other people socialize normally, and I'm like, yeah, that's a child on the spectrum. I love kids on the spectrum, is the thing. They're my favorite people. So, like, you might, some people might think it's shit talking. To me, no, it's just understanding, you know? <laughs> You're an ISDJ. <laughs> it's not, it's not shit talking at all. Those are, those are the most trustworthy individuals from my experience because other people lie and manipulate for gain in a way where ah, it's just sort of universal the way that, that non spectrum humans are. They're just like lying manipulators. Okay. So, not all of them, so okay. listen, Cameron. What that sounds like to me, as I tend to, you know, I like to translate everything into cognitive functions, right? Totally. It sounds like an effie poor person basically saying, effie is the source of all the world's problems. It's now, terrible. translate what's effie mean? Effie means, such a, effie yeah. means specifically pay attention to how your social presentation, how it's like turd polishing. You might, you, you <laughs> might do the turd polishing. Okay. Uh, they, the, Place that doesn't really have very good food, but that has very fancy waiter dishes, all that kind of silverware shit, and charges a bunch for it. Yeah, you would say like that. That's what's wrong with the world, right? There. Absolutely. That yeah. kind of that's bullshit. the absolute thing I hate the most. Yeah, and I pay a whole fucking day's pay for it. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, that's experience. You're an experiential knower. So that would be like the worst kind of thing because you know personally from your own experience, you can tell definitively. This steak really isn't very good. It's kind of chewy. It's got a lot of gristle in it. I paid 30 bucks for this fucking thing. Yeah. Um, and they're trying to pass it off hmm. with a bunch of uh, bells and whistles and bows and ribbons and ignoring the actual quality of the thing. So 
that's would be expected for an ISTJ. Yeah. You would identify with people on the spectrum because at least you're like, I like you guys. You guys are authentic. You're not bullshit. Authentic is a word I go back to again and again. And in fact, I go back to that one with, I've decided that I like kindergartners the most of any age kids. Because mm. kindergartners have not learned all of the tricks and manipulations that first graders already know. Kindergartners are actually really sort of themselves, their own authentic human soul that is not yet institutionalized. So, um, interestingly, like one might say that uh, a person's polar function for you, Cameron, FE, again, that sort of social manipulation thing, um, that it always stays about kindergarten age. Yeah. My FI is the same way. I, FI means what? FI is your what you hold precious for reasons that are subjective. Like, um, I love my cat a lot. Mm -hmm. Objectively, if one day cat were to get by a car and you were to try to measure, like, well, how, how much is that? How does that really hurt you, Eric? Now you don't have to feed the cat. And now you know, yeah. And what do you get out of the cat? The cat doesn't do anything for you. It just takes from you, really. That's just it's pretending like your FI or your inferior feelings don't exist. The reality yeah. is, what they get from the cat is the cat love it. The cat and I love each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I get love. The cat gets love. That's it. Yeah, it yeah. is a sympathetic. Uh, uh, it's not a parasitic. It's a they call it sympathetic relationship. Symbiotic. Symbiotic. That's it. Symbiotic relationship. It, it is. Yeah. I mean, you look at the studies of people who have their animals, they may be freaky deekies, but um, the animal makes them happier. You know, imagine that person just alone with no other person versus that person with at least some animal who gets a little bit excited when they come home mm -hmm. or whatever. So, like, that's taking a very TE frame to it as well. And TE is the logic of solving problems. Mm -hmm. The reason that I'm quite confident that you and my dad are going to get along just fine. It, in part is because you are ISTJ, he's an ESTJ, mm -hmm. which means your first two functions for both of you are introverted sensing and extroverted thinking. His is extroverted thinking first. He's a problem solver and he cannot engage with, basically he can't engage with anything in the world except through treating it as a problem to be solved. I get it. I <laughs> totally get it. Because you can there's a beginning and an end and there's success. And then there's like literally the feeling of elation that like, look how great I solved this thing. Look how great this thing works now. It's better than it ever was. I created a thing that never existed before. That's fucking awesome. Love that stuff. Well, you know, the interesting thing about solving problems is some kinds of things are more suitable to that frame than others. Like, my dad is frustrated a lot by trying to use his solvency frame in dealing with my mother. Yeah. She's not going to get any better. She's just going to get worse. Yeah. And yeah. so he's dealing with the practical issue of, okay, well, what's the most efficient way to, to deal with morning times when she gets up? Well, that's changing so rapidly too, you know, yeah. and, and from day to day it changes. There's not a lot of consistency in my mom's behavior. So as soon as he tries to adapt to one thing, it's like sure you can't yeah it's not going to be a set of rules that's a logical equation that works the same each time it's uh an equation that's well you know dementia is defined by the lack of you know the neurons touching that used to touch so things are firing differently it's you know diff my, my grandfather had it my dad's dad and um yeah i got to see sort of I, mean, uh, I was he lived in Nevada, so Cameron, a lot of more there, stuff I heard. There's a request, a question for you. Yes. That Winston's mom would like you to answer. Can you please describe your garage? Well, my garage is a place that's not my own garage, so I just have a bunch of milk crates stacked up in a tiny area because I don't have any space. Um, but yeah, I put my stuff in cubes that stack. Some stuff exit the 
exits the top of the milk crate. So those are on the top of the stacks that are all about, you know, shoulder height or something. I've got hooks in the ceiling. The bike is on a hook. I made shelves out of one by eights and plywood that I ripped in half. I made them 30 years ago, but, um, you know, if there's stuff on shelves, um, I've got bitch and tools. I've got the best tools that I want. You know, I, the one thing I splurged on is my Makita cordless tools. I, I'll be kind of cheap on stuff like, you know, uh, not cheap, but I'll just like I'll seek the lowest price, which I did with my tools. But I got the highest quality tools that I want. There's not any other tool in the world that I I have the set of tools I need. I um, love my tools. I have a question for you, Cameron. Do you find this process here of uh, being asked questions about your garage or just in general about whatever? Do you find it relaxing or? Um, say invigorating or making you tense or uh, do you find it annoying or how what's okay. your experience um, of it? it since you're asking me about my wheelhouse that's you know I could talk about tools all day uh, it's more invigorating if you ask me about like what touches you the worst in life and makes you sad you know like have you really reached your hopes and dreams I you know that might not not be as invigorating for me but with shit I'm good at yeah, it totally excites me. You okay. know, it excites me like we're on a bike ride and I'm wheeling. It's, it's cool. I like it. So what are some of your favorite activities to do? You mentioned bike riding. Uh, I am literally obsessed with my electric scooter project where I built a one-wheel drive electric scooter this year. I, I made it. I added another drive wheel, so it's two-wheel drive. So I'm obsessed with the project. I two wheel I, drive scooter. Two wheel drive scooter. I, I've got a YouTube channel on it. I've got people who watch my me and my scooter six thousand times. Um, not that I don't know. My channel's terrible. Mm -hmm. I uh, my video quality is terrible because a lot of it was just in a dark garage with one camera aiming. So when you're building these um, scooters, do you get components? from like Amazon or whatever and assemble them? Or what do you do? Uh, the way it worked for me, I bought my first one on Craigslist. It just used with, you know, a little bit thrashed. Um, I bought one that had a weird setup and I learned that that wasn't the cool one to have. So I, I bought that, I beat the shit out of it. I broke it, I fixed it a couple of times, I sold it. And then I bought um, another used one and really realized Okay, this is a great scooter in stock form. So it's called the, the Show Me M365 scooter, which is the original bird rental scooter, but also for sale privately. So um, I got one of those and then I bought a bunch of parts on eBay. So I bought the other battery controller, throttle, brake, drive motor, all that stuff. So I see. Some locally, some eBay. So when you go to build those things in general, you're looking for one that you find that somebody's broken and it's getting rid of cheap, that kind of thing? I've done that, certainly. Yeah, I'll buy something that's worth a couple hundred dollars for $50. I'll spend 20 minutes fixing it, and then I'll sell it for $150. Sure. Although, the drive out, you know, it's it's not that it's really making money. Say I make 100 bucks. Well, it really took me three hours to make 100 bucks. so that's not really that bitching, but it's cool. By the way, this was Tahoe, right, Eric? This weed? Yeah. It's pretty smooth. I got to tell you. You already baked. I, I got to <laughs> stop. Uh, it's like I'm already tired, too. I haven't been able to sleep. I was like, I'm kind of tore up anyway. I can't make it through all seven weeds. Dude, neither can I. I don't smoke that much weed. <laughs> I just can't do it's it. So yeah, I already feel pretty ripped. And I and I dumped I dumped half of it out. The weed tune is going to pay off later, indeed. Uh, I I appreciate female ENTP bringing the word voluptuous into the occasion here. It makes me think to myself. If I were to describe this moment, New Year, in two words, a good choice might be 
cosmically voluptuous. Beckoning upon a future that billows with boobage. Metaphorically. Well, and literally. Let's say. Return to the company of my beloved Rachel. I don't know if you guys saw it earlier. I know Cameron didn't see it. Earlier, there's a live stream. Speaking of Rachel's, is not talking about my Rachel, but of course, the Rachel known as other Rachel, because she's the other Rachel. Um, she's with the other typologist guy, typer person, Isaiah Rude. So it's appropriate that um, she be other Rachel. I think I'm going to just start calling Isaiah Rude, maybe other Eric to simplify things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Cameron and I are going to have lunch with my dad and mom today. My dad's going to be barbecuing up something. And that'll be nice. And uh, the reason I asked that question, Cameron, about whether you found it relaxing to be asked questions and such yeah. is according to the cognitive function theory, you're, you will find sort of being given, being given the floor to just talk about whatever you feel like talking about regarding a given subject. Mm -hmm. If it's like I said, if it's anything real, if it's a comfortable one, you'll find that very, um, relaxing and sort of like like a relief in a sense. Sure. Um, interesting that you said that because that's not the case at all for everybody. You know, some people it's the opposite. It's like they, they find being asked questions be, to be put on the spot and having to put them they find it really tense and they stress out about how they did afterwards because they have FE more. Right, so the other one is this I've had the behavior modification through my career. Uh, you could sort of call it a career as a teacher. So I've, um, compared to everybody else, like the story of jurors is this if there's a teacher on the jury, everyone's like, Oh, damn it, this annoying person's always going to talk and dominate everything and have to make everything all perfect and nice. And blah. um, so being a teacher, I'm used to talking, I'm it's not. A big right. thing for me, but but this is the other thing. Let's say you've been to psychologists a couple times. Mm -hmm. There's there's also talking in like let's let's just access your sad place. So mm -hmm. you know the shittiest thing is for a person to be depressed, <laughs> hang out with nobody, and then see psychologists. If you see a fucking psychologist, they're gonna they're gonna say, well, you only get talked to when you're accessing your dark place. Let's access your sad place. <laughs> Let's access your sad place. Okay, and by the way, I need $150 from you, bitch. You, you charge me $150 to help me access my sad place? Yeah, exactly. So at the end of the $1,500, when you're still depressed because you've accessed your sad place with a person, and then you've just been like, well, I'm just going to smoke bowls until the next session. Uh, and that person spends the fifteen hundred dollars to go to Costa Rica. All right, listen. If I'm gonna pay somebody fifteen hundred dollars, they better access my dirty place. No oh, shit, dude. Psychologists are the biggest fakes. They get the fifteen hundred. They go on vacation. You can't afford to go on vacation. You literally <laughs> can't do the thing that would make you happy. You pay them the money that caught that would be the vacation money. A fucking hundred fifty a week. Let's say it's seventy five a week. Let's say you're only for ten weeks. Seeing a psychologist, seven hundred fifty dollars is what it costs to go on a four, four day, five night, you know, cruise to Cozumel or whatever. <laughs> I'm fucking serious, man. Psychology is bullshit, and I have a psych degree. Um. So here's the thing, like. People who, whether or not you are going to be, basically, whether you find talk therapy meaningful or purposeful has a lot to do with whether or not you have, where you have your introverted intuition. Mm. Introverted intuition is the part of you that recognizes patterns and says, this is true. 
So for example, at introverted intuition, if you keep seeing the same word or number or whatever on the sign, it'll be like, I keep, I keep seeing the, sign, the number eight. Yeah. What am I supposed to, what does this mean? That must mean I need to pick eight for the lottery, or it must mean I, um, that. On I the, find that so illogical. I'll see people day. do that. Well, I've got a friend into numerology, my aunt is, and mm -hmm. she'll mention like, oh, well, I, she'll be talking about something, and then she'll mention that the bir her birthday and the birthday of the person she's telling me about is in the same month or something. And like, if I was telling you, you know, yeah, I hung out with my friend, our birthdays are both in October, uh, but then went, you know, said two more sentences. I'm like, this is just a layer that means nothing to me. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying yeah. that NI is actually, I'm not personally saying that. I'm saying that he perceives NI as being used wrong by everybody yeah. because it's eight slot for him. Just like I think of SE as being used wrong a lot because it's eight slot for me. Um, the thing is, ISFJs and ISTJs have an almost adversarial, adversarial relationship with and the idea that external truths, truths of the world and of the community at large um, that are kind of permanent universal truths in some regard can be determinant about your own ontology. Like a, a, an experiential knower, somebody who knows by SI first and foremost, can, always thinks that their experience, their being, their life is defined foremost by things within their control, namely how they how their body feels at the root, um, how their routines go, what they attend to and what they don't attend to. And it's a very particularist scope. So it's they, they're necessarily adversarial to the idea that these words that some other people say should determine how they feel or live or be or know. Uh, so, oh, uh, is that what that's called? Winston's model the four effect. The thing is, people talk about the four effect as though it were some sort of cognitive failure, you know, cognitive bias, something like that. It's yet it's just it's an engine of one particular kind of magical thinking, and how one uses it matters because after all, the thing that not being accounted for by people who are accounting for the four effect is the role of observation in the whole thing. What it is that you are observing when you are observing the four effect is going to shape. The impact it has in yours and any number of other possible realities. A reality is basically uh, the because reality is within you, right? You never experience any reality except your own being. So it's fair to say that each being is their own reality. Uh, however, because those realities are grounded physically within a single physical realm, Grounded metaphysically by the binary nature of communications and the grammar there underlying. Um, well, that probably explains why I'm constantly <coughs> clenching my ontological sphincter despite the fact that <laughs> I am writing the crest of this cosmically voluptuous wave of time called now. How poetic is that? So poetic? To win some sort of fucking prize for poetry writing. That's how poetic it is. I should win the Orange County Prize for Best Up-and-Coming Young Poet. That's the title I want. I want a plaque. I want to say my name on it. I want to say best up and coming young poet 2020. 
And I want it to be signed by somebody important. Like, uh, let's see. Um, who would you like something to be signed by? Who'd be like someone, who's the most important person who's alive right now? Like, we want to certify that Eric is um, whatever Eric would like to be. Hmm. Signed Obama. Or signed, you know, hmm. who's the coolest person in the world who's alive? Okay, Not the well, coolest, but the most. The one I want most, the most want them to sign it? He's got the best signature okay. in the world. You know what? I want it signed by Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un. I was just touting how dictatorship is important last night because we were towing the Rose Parade floats. And we, we took four hours to go three miles because we were stopped for virtually all of the time. And everyone was waiting for some other authority to say, oh, no, you can go. Um, but what I say is you, dem democracy sucks. Don't have Easier people raise to hand. seek you forgiveness than permission. Well, that's when you need the SE DOM to just start moving the thing, and then everybody else adjusts. You just need a badass dictator that no one can <laughs> that can shoot you with a cannon if you don't obey. Uh, you just need you need somebody willing to ignore all the people saying yeah 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 and just do shit. Doing shit is good, but but the one thing that's the worst though. Hey, do never... something even if it's wrong. I hate that one. I hate do something even if no, don't do something that's wrong. I don't like that one. People don't do, do that, wrong. but you should also be able to just move immediately and just figure out the best step without having to sit around and think and talk. You should be able, always be able to just do the way I see it. Chris, Chris or Harry, do you have a channel? Um, Alexander Cruz says, Hey, did everyone see how the Pope slapped an Asian lady? No, but I'm in, I'm extremely pleased that that happened. I think that's great. Um, in what context did the Pope slap an Asian lady, I wonder? Um, I he might have seen a little bit of sin on her cheek, maybe? <laughs> there was a bee on it? <laughs> there was a B on it. <laughs> Would Eric, so Eric, there's a B on your cheek. Would you like me to? Oh no, I'll flick the B. You don't have to slap a B. You just give it a little flick. I won't be slapping you if there's a B. <laughs> it's like a full on. <laughs> what do you? Hey, have? what the fuck? Well, on okay, what would you have to have on your face for one to slap it and help you? I mean, like that a scorpion. Maybe a scorpion. I mean, you'd have to have. Um, you have to be you have to be on fire and stuck to the. Oh yeah, yeah. Something. Your face is on fire. Someone slaps it. In or like uh, uh, like this, like a a melted thing of plastic that's flaming. It like gets stuck onto your face. Yeah. And for some reason, your arms are behind your back, which was like holding. Something that prevents you from getting them out. I don't know why. Somebody would slap you then. Oh, check it. Here's where the Pope is. That the Pope? I don't. I don't know which guy is the Pope, but that guy slapped a woman who's like pulling on him. Oh yeah. That's pretty justified. That's not any like. She walks up to the pulp, you know lectern and she just slaps her across the face for being a sinner. No, he slapped her because she was pulling on him. Well, you know, um, she's fine. She'll be okay. It's not as good as this video, though. This is a way better almost Pope, near Pope video. Look, Pope on a scooter. Pope on a scooter. What is this thing called? Scooter? scooter? Electric scooter? Electric scooter. It's called In scoot, scoot, scootery. Yeah, that's a good one. Pretty good. Crowd cheers as Irish priest leads Christmas mass on a scooter. Scoot, scoot, scooter. -er. <sighs> Don't tell me any depressing shit. Don't want to hear it. No depressing shit. We're gonna have a my new year's resolution is nobody else tell me to be depressing shit. I have new year's resolutions for other people. I've decided. Oh, that's cool. Change it up. 
Yeah. Tell people what their resolution yeah, is. Yeah, right. Your resolution is to mow my lawn every week. <laughs> hey, I'm the internet guru. I don't have resolution for me. I got resolutions for you. In USSR, state makes New Year's resolutions for you because it doesn't respect <laughs> your autonomy. So do you want to discuss uh, the the nature of this work? Yeah, we can dad, talk. Yeah, we, yeah, we can talk about it. Now let's um, talk with my dad about it. Okay. Um, so, uh, the Pope apologized for his loss of patience. He should try to spin it as he was trying to dance with her. No, I was trying to do a move. It's called the hand slap. You've heard of it, I'm sure. The milk and honey poet is just like a troll thing, I'm sure. Dr. Eric, would you introduce us to Cameron and tell us how do you knew to us? How do you how do you know this new to us, STJ? Hi, STJ. Cameron. Where's that camera? The camera's that thing? Oh yeah, I tried to keep you out. You want to be on camera? I can move the best way. Yeah, I, I'm not smoking the weed, so I'm trying. All right. Um What's up, people? I have known Cameron for a long time because he would best be described back in the day as the little brother of my friend in high school. And he wasn't, I mean, he wasn't really a great friend in high school. I didn't see a whole hell of a lot of Bailey, but he hung out with our group. Hey, Ruse Moose. Um, I hear you like Scandinavian sunsets. Uh, what am I looking for? Oh, I know. I'm going to show. Yeah, yeah, here. So, anyways, I was out of touch with him then for many years. When all of a sudden, one day, out of the blue, oh my gosh, everyone at home get to see the video. Everything changed. Yeah. Well, anyway, what happened was, cut me the address. Here we go. What happened was, I was looking for somebody to draw some pictures to help me make a video I wanted to make for a song I was making out of a poem I had made. And so, <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Uh, hey, Eric, can you put the comments on this side or something? Or Oh, yeah, yeah I can cop it out and move it over here. I can't see what the folks at home are talking about. No problemo. No problemo, bro. You got high tech stuff? Cool. No problemo. That's why they call me the guy who knows how to be on the internet. Let's see. That is one of the things that uh, I admire about you your ability to do computer stuff that I can do with saws. You can do mm -hmm. with keyboards what I can do with a saw. But you can actually use a saw too, Eric. So you really are a more, what is it, the Renaissance individual? Uh, I really call it a half-ass jack. Yeah, a jack of all hacks. <sighs> okay, so what I wanted to say was before, I guess I checked there, I was going to say something important. Oh, yeah, where I know camera from. So, anywho, I saw him on Facebook because he had put up on Facebook a picture he had drawn. He had taken a photograph of the picture he had drawn and he put it on Facebook. He put several of them up there. I was like, oh, you draw pictures? Um, do you want to come over and hang out and draw some pictures? <laughs> Play with me, basically. <laughs> and uh, he's like, yeah, okay. And he came over and then we just like, Spent the next couple of weeks hanging out a lot because we were working on that mm -hmm. project together. And in fact, it remains one of the met, the best projects I've I've done on the channel. I think uh, one of the more labor most labor intensive ones. I took it very seriously. I tried to get it to look good and work good. Cameron took it seriously. Drew a lot of pictures for it. Uh, I had to finish the poem <laughs> to 
before I could fully finish the song. So it, was, it had a lot of components to it. I think it came out pretty damn good. And I'm going to put the link to it right here. You can see Cameron's drawings in this video. And you can see here my singing and songwriting and uh, poem writing. I think you probably edited some of the photos too. I think you probably are. Part I put some of, background. Uh, I put background. Yeah, you you're you're part of the artists, you know, as well. But yeah, editing is a huge art too. I know it took it took Eric tons of time. It may take me like maybe twenty minutes to do a drawing in there. Some of them were like maybe an eight minute drawing. I don't think any took more than thirty minutes really. Probably not. But to edit a video, and I, I kept telling Eric, like, no, no, we have to have the MTV generation have a cut every 1.5 seconds. So Eric used to like a one-take video, and, um, you know, I, it's, I was using, <laughs> it was a lot of work. I was using Windows Movie Maker to make that, too. Yeah. It probably been a little easier in Premiere. I like the new Windows Movie Maker a lot. That's very efficient. It's a very efficient app. And up. Hello, everyone. I'm finally catching a live stream. Lol. If you have any questions for Cameron, since you don't see him very often, please feel free to throw them out there. If you have any questions for me, that's fine as well. Um, I am, I have to work at 3 p.m. today. It's in about three and a half hours, a little bit less. Dr. Mandel posted a video that says, Hugs produce oxytocin, and we should hug each other more. I don't want to hug now. Juliet Barrett is asleep. Maybe host Eric should hug Cameron since Rachel is away. Cameron's got a girlfriend. I got a girlfriend. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, oxytocin is the love drug. So, you know, I guess when that guy Winston hugs his mom, um, you know. Winston's a ferret. Anyway, yeah. uh, I want to talk a little bit about being clinchy. I mean, I've, I've been very clinchy the last few days. Uh, here's what I mean by clinchy. Like I'm sitting here in this chair, and I realize that I'm trying to like lift myself up physically with just like clenching all my muscles. And stuff. We should go bike riding. We should go bike. I'm gonna Dude, go get my bike fixed. I gotta go get fixed. What is, What do you need though? Just a tire? Yeah, I need to replace the inner tubes. And that's easy. Let's do it. We'll go. We'll be bike riding soon. I mean, I totally want it because it's, Dude, it, it's the time you go along the parade route. There's all the junk you get to ride around. It's fun right now. This okay, is the moment. Well, we're forgetting about the fun, even. Uh, I just find that around here in Arcadia, most errands that I can run, anywhere in the general down from between the freeway and, uh, you know, like long, long day or something, mm -hmm. it's just easier on a bike. It's way better. Because oh, especially Arcadia traffic yeah, now. It takes so awful. much longer now. You're, you're literally going to go faster than the cars through Arcadia every time, even uphill. Yeah, totally. And it's just, it's not that big a distance is around here, but anytime you cross Huntington, it's like, fuck, I gotta, gotta ford the mighty river. Yeah. What type is Cameron's girlfriend? ESFP. So that makes them, it, in my opinion, I guess that makes them duels because they're the same, they're proceeding types and the same, they with that physicality. Uh, as the native native ecosystem of the dominant function, in the same way that Rachel and I, as any and and I both have metaphysicality, and that uh, Susie and Abraham, as F E N T I, both have metaphysicality. So the judges, duality is right, but with the receivers, it's the me out of email. The guy next to me is ISTJ, he is. A particular knower with solvency as his tool function. Uh, that ego block, you know, generally works towards impacting him positively under his FI frame. He likes to experience the experience of having and using and holding and, you know, in, engaging with. That which he holds precious, I guess. Hey, ISTJ guy. His name's Cameron Feed the Feed the TI Child. What's up, Feed the TI Child? Hello. Does he like Do physics? I like physics? I love physics. 
Are you guys good at math? Who here is good at math? Um, Eric, if I said what's like 24 times 27, would you do it in your head or would you go to a paper or a calculator? What's what by what? 24 times 27. Well, 20 times 20 is 400. 4 times 7 is 48. I have to use a calculator. Fuck it. I hate math. Yeah, exactly. See, one of the things that I've done, not after smoking a bunch of bowls quite as easily, but, like, I don't mind doing, like, public math. Do, like, 98 times 22 or something. Like, I would, I would do that. You know, I'd be like, well, that would be 100 times 22. So it's... It's 2200 minus 22 times 2. So it's 2200 minus 44. So that's going to be 2156. The way I see that. All right, Cameron. Yeah, I'm going like to second, I'm gonna Go second hand bones. I'm going to second hand bones. Important truth. We don't do nerd shit around here, Cameron. That's nerd shit. I like that. You know, uh, back to the, do you like Ford's? Yeah, no, Ford sucks. Do I like Jay Leno's Garage? Not really. Would you Ford a river in a Ford? No. What if it were at the fjord? Schlergen. What, if you, were, what if you were forging something while fording the river in a Ford across the fjord? Then, yes. I accept. Uh, all right. Well, so, um, it's me, Eric, Eileen, OMG, what? OMG, indeed, woman. You're OMG, OMG, me? Is it because you're looking in a mirror? Because what, what sticks to me, I'm, you, I am rubber and you are glue. What bounces off of me will stick to you because you're saying that about yourself, OMG. Because how could I be OMG? You're going to change your name every fucking five minutes. Huh, I'm ontologically clenching again. Isn't debate? No, debate's not nerdy. It's like, it's a hundred times less nerdy than bacon, and bacon's not even nerdy. Debate's like, um, it's like MMA, but way more cool. To me, debate seemed like future lawyer training, because everyone's just at the drop of the hat, arguing both sides of every single thing in a way that would seem, you know, the way people hate lawyers, like, oh, no, they're devoid of morality and ethics, they'll just do whatever. In a way, it's just like, no, your personal, what's right isn't, doesn't matter. What, what matters is winning, I guess, in a way. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Well, what matters is the defensibility of the words. If you're if your words are if your words are defensible enough, then they'll successfully move levers in the legal system in ways that simple defensibility won't impact other systems. Uh, let's see. I would like to see a triathlon that included one of the three things being debate one of the three things being MMA and one of the three things being steeplechase with a horse. <laughs> Isn't there slap chess where you slap the guy in the face while you're playing chess? <laughs> I think there is. That's a stupid game. Well, you, it's just what you talked about. No, so I'm not getting slapped. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the same thing. Okay, well, yeah, okay. I'll tell you what. How about we'll do this. The triathlon will be this. It'll be um, steeple chase on a horse, it'll be debate, and it'll be proxy MMA. <laughs> okay, you send in your stunt, whoever yeah. you want, you have your champion. Yeah, okay, <laughs> sounds good. Proxy MMA. Um, uh, okay, so uh, I think I'm gonna wrap this up so that uh, Cameron and I can discuss uh, the Business at hand, which has to do with uh, my family employing him to help with some caregiving stuff. It's hard to find somebody who's able and willing to do a little bit of lifting. Uh, I can do it, but my dad can't, and the lady we had before couldn't. Rachel couldn't. You know, 
she's kind of she's not like man big or anything but she's she's smallish my mom pretty small but i think just i guess her meat dense or something she got dense meat dense i don't meat. know she's a okay. dense meated woman all right so anyway thanks for being here don't forget to do my uh, later youtube